I might show you some uh, slides. What really is in a nuclear reactor? Barium, lanthanum, cerium, presidium, ne neo, I can't pronounce that. That's the most important slide you're going to see tonight. And that's what nobody knows. Hafnium, tantalum, I don't know, tungsten. <sighs> What might we use these for? Maybe they're so exotic, they'll just be curiosities. We've been there before. That was said of most of the elements that were discovered on the periodic table. For example, who would have thought an obscure semi-metal, germanium, discovered in the 1880s, would turn out to be the crucial ingredient in the development of transistors? That 70 years later. Neodymium and samarium regarded for a century as just curiosities. They turned out to be essential to the construction of super powerful permanent magnets. It started in the 40s as a result of nuclear fission, as a result of splitting of the atoms. You got a lot of rare earth elements. We literally had atomic level control over this and we studied the hell out of them. When we first load nuclear fuel in a uranium-fueled reactor, it is entirely uranium, and most of that is uranium-238. As it burns down, first at a year, two years, and then three years, you see the formation of other things. These are the fission products, as well as some of the transuranics. The hatch at the bottom gives away the fact that most of the rod is still uranium-238. The overwhelming majority is still this unburned uranium-238 still most of that potential energy remains to be exploited. In fact, the only fraction that has been truly burned is the fraction you see kind of in those light pastel colors. Those are the fission products. But the remainder of the material is unrealized energy. Xenon is the most common of the fission products. NASA uses xenon to throw out the backside of an ion engine. We used to joke at NASA that xenon was one of the few things worth launching into space because it actually cost about as much as it cost to put up in space. The idea of splitting matter and of creating other particles, you're getting into a lot of alchemical realms that I think that starts bumping into a lot of people's religious spheres. We have to have humility and understand who we are, and then we're not. <sighs> we're not God. We're, we're just fallible human beings who make mistakes, and therefore we must eradicate all things nuclear. One man's waste is another man's treasure. And it doesn't take a lot of thought. Come up with clever ways of utilizing that waste. You can help a lot of people, and you can monetize that waste and you can do it safely, and you can do it, in some cases, for very strategic reasons. Let's go and have a look at some. In the mid-90s, the Connecticut Yankee Power Station was decommissioned. And here, what you can see is the entire load of spent fuel from 28 years of operations. That produced in its lifetime, from a small nuclear reactor, 110 million megawatt hours of electricity with no greenhouse gas emissions. And that's every bit of fuel that was required to do it is sitting there in storage quietly, happily, causing no one any problems. And I'm sure you'll agree that that's a pretty small facility. Let's just have a look at it in the context of the landscape. It's a pretty place, Connecticut, surrounded by state parks. What you see there, that is the source of decades of anti-nuclear fear mongering on the basis of spent nuclear fuel. That's it. That's what we've been told to be afraid of. Do you know what I see when I look at it? I see another 10 billion megawatt hours of electricity because that fuel is just waiting to be recycled and reused in a fast reactor. The rods generate energy by transforming some of the uranium into different elements. Fission products start to build up. We need chemistry to separate them out. But since the fission products are thoroughly mixed with the uranium, Pyroprocessing, a nifty technology invented by Argonne scientists. The thing is, they call it pyroprocessing, but it's a molten salt process. They're dissolving this thing in a molten salt, and they're doing electrochemistry on it. After chopping the fuel rods into small pieces, you submerge them in a vat of molten salts. When you run an electric current through the vat, the uranium and transuranics separate out and forms crystals on the electrodes. Molten salt can not only be a fuel, it's a way to reprocess or process nuclear fuels and clean them up for reuse. 